The Super Heavy booster to push Starship to its first Earth orbit has arrived at the launch site. SpaceX's fourth rideshare mission lifts off. Crew Dragon is on standby, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Thursday morning, Super Heavy Booster 7 was transported down Highway 4 in Boca Chica, Texas, from the high bay to the launch site, where it was promptly attached to a crane and is expected to be lifted onto a simulation mount this weekend for stress testing next week. Given 7's integrated hook-in points for the launch tower's rocket lifting and catching arms, if the can crushing is successful, or not successful, if it goes well, I assume we'll be seeing some chopstick action with the first stage. Until now, only the upper stage Starship spacecraft has received the honor. Super Heavy 7 is expected to be the first booster to help Starship reach orbit, hopefully as early as next month, but you may have noticed on its way in that it lacks engines. Elon informed us a couple weeks ago that they'll have 39 flight-worthy Raptor 2 engines built by the end of March, and that they'll be integrating them in April. Booster 7 will take 33, Starship 24 will acquire the remaining 6. But future Starships are expected to require 9 Raptors, bringing the total count up to 42 for an entire Starship Super Heavy rocket. The great news is, promises are already being delivered with Raptor deliveries. On Wednesday, the first three of 39 flight-worthy Raptor 2 engines arrived at Starbase. Just minutes ago, SpaceX launched their fourth dedicated rideshare mission, carrying 40 satellites to sun-synchronous orbit. This was the seventh mission for the Falcon 9 booster, which malfunctioned during his landing burn totally slamming into the drone ship, creating a massive explosion bra and killing a family of local plankton. Die, yeah! April Fools. Oh shit, I got you good, you f Over the following hour, all 40 sats were deployed successfully. The next SpaceX mission on the books is Axiom-1, the space station's first all-private crew. They have entered pre-launch quarantine and are expected to lift off aboard Endurance on April 6th. Then it will be NASA's turn. Crew 4 will use their new Dragon, Freedom, to ride to the ISS now no earlier than 420, allowing more buffer time between the two Dragon missions. Jared Isaacman, commander of this year's Polaris Dawn mission, shared a video today that he took during last year's Inspiration 4 mission of his Dragon capsules circularizing their Earth orbit by lowering their apogee using the four Dracos. You can hear the, the Dracos firing in the background. These are our forward bulkhead Dracos. This is our primary way to create a Delta V maneuver. It almost sounds like an orchestra. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. NASA astronaut Mark concluded his record-breaking stay of 355 days at the International Space Station on Wednesday morning when he and his two Russian cosmonaut crewmates boarded their Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft and departed for Earth. The trio re-entered the atmosphere about four hours later, deployed a hefty shoot bra above Kazakhstan, and landed at 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time. Despite Russia invading Ukraine and the sanctions the U.S. government placed on Russia in return, Mark was treated like a princess and returned home to the United States just days later. NASA remains hopeful the Russian government will approve an agreement between our two countries that would have the first cosmonaut fly aboard Crew-5. During his stay at the space station, Mark made approximately 5,680 orbits of Earth and traveled about 150,619,530 statute miles, enough to make 312 round trips to the moon and back. Well, that's all for today. I'd like to thank my supporters on Locals for their financial support that make these videos possible. If you too would like to support what we do and receive access to more content, you can use the link in the description below. Do have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.